Inscription is not a normal game, even if at first glance it looks like one. While it has elements of familiarity, it also has a number of tricks up its sleeve. The infamy of its creator, Daniel Mullins, is such that a lot of folk going into this were expecting at least some form of subversion, and it is there, for sure, although I wouldn't want to spoil the surprise. Inscription is not a normal game, but it echoes the design principles of a number of its peers. It's a deck-building roguelike, aping the style and substance of a pen and paper game, a vicious, tactically demanding onslaught against a seemingly omniscient foe, a fight for your very soul, where even the most innocuous decision has the power to seal your fate, all built around this incredibly compelling meta-narrative that ends up being way more important than you first expect. But where Inscription's true brilliance lies is in the designs between its mechanics, ones that feel so natural you wonder why we haven't always done this. The premise is simple. You're trapped in this alpine lodge with a barely comprehensible demonic presence, forced to play a card game where the stakes are your soul. The game itself is simple yet sophisticated. Like all good deck builders, it has a myriad of depths to it. The board has 12 spaces. You have four to place your cards, then the enemy comes to you, either attacking your cards or you directly. Some cards require a sacrifice of bone and blood. Many have additional effects that can make or break an encounter. Damage is paid in teeth dropped into bowls on a scale. When the scales tip to the table, the encounter ends, either in your victory or in a precious candle being snuffed out. And when the place goes dark, it's game over. There is more beside but this is the general gist of the game. And within this frame is a surprising amount of depth. Inscriptions encounters are brutal and punishing. They're about thinking three moves ahead, pitting your opponent's strengths against them and understanding how small variables can build up to a victory peel or a death knell in equal measure. It's incredibly compelling. Deadly bouts against beast, serpent, insect and the like, where sometimes even strength and tactical advantage are not enough, and you have to physically rip the teeth out of your head to keep the wolf from the door. Inscription is not a normal game. Its oddities pretty much insist on it being a digital endeavour. It could not really exist in the real world. At least, not without some serious changes made. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time someone's lost a tooth or an eye over a card game, but still. This is a game that knows its medium, and relishes the chance to bring some more supernatural elements to the table, both in ways that will be obvious from the footage you're seeing right now, and, well, let's not spoil that other thing. These elements are used to incredible effect to maintain the illusion that there is a lot more at stake here than your average gamble. A sense that, before victory can truly be achieved, you will need to give up things you previously thought immutable and sacred. But one of the brilliant aspects of Inscription is that, despite the absurdities of its aesthetics, it still feels like it could be a real game. There's a gorgeous tangibility to the way the cards feel in your hand, with their rough edges and oft smudged ink adorned. The look of the figurines and props used to represent your journey, brittle dioramas that breathe life into this artificial setting, the demon's numerous masquerades, these carved wooden masks that allow them to take on many roles throughout this journey, the clinking sound of teeth dropping onto the scales, pushing you or your opponent ever further into defeat. Mullins has thought about the tactile experience of playing the game as much as he has about the mechanical complexity of it. But for me, Inscription's best feature is not really a mechanic at all, nor is it an aspect of its aesthetic layer. There's something going on in between that confers an amazing sense of immersion, more so than the cards or the environment or, well, that other thing. It's the ability to get up and walk around. Anytime while you're on the map scroll, 
you have the ability to back away from the game and explore the lodge. Your movement is limited, your interactions with the environment even more so, but this allows you to gain a new perspective on the proverbial battlefield you're neck deep in. It's not superfluous. There's a very specific reason for why you can do this and why it's even pointed out to you by your captor, but again, let's not spoil that other thing. The act of standing up and walking away is in itself an opportunity to take a breather, to take stock of where you are in this particular run. It's a pit stop that can be an effective mental tool for dealing with the hardships awaiting you, and possibly even a means of stopping you walking away in the real world, perhaps even for good. Like the rest of the game, it's not so cut and dry. For all it gives, it must take from you in equal measure. By giving you this small amount of freedom, it further instills in you the idea that you're really trapped in this world. The door to the outside is locked. The creature holding you captive has an impossible reach. To strengthen your resolve before rubbing your nose in the dirt is a trick most cruel, but it is used here to such great effect that where most games with such a grave penalty might eventually put some people off, there is still the drive there to continue, to see it through to the bitter end, even when there is nothing you can do but play and lose and play again. That is, until you figure out. Well, let's not spoil that other thing.